American History TV is at the annual meeting of the Organization of American Historians in Milwaukee. And joining us is Paul Finkelman, who is a professor of uh, law and public policy at the Albany Law School. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's a delight to be with C-SPAN. And you are here because you're participating in a panel that's called New Perspectives on the um, the 19th century slave trade. Right. What did you What did you talk about in your discussion today? Well, the panel talked about two pieces of the slave trade. One was the kidnapping of black children from mostly Philadelphia, but also other places where they were free. And this is something that historians have known a lot about, but there has not been very much research. And so the two of the panelists uh, were able to discuss research that is ongoing about kidnapping gangs. And this is really kind of an early version of trafficking people because you have free people who are, you have free people who are grabbed off the streets, thrown into ships, taken to Delaware, Maryland, and from there transported further south. Because uh, Delaware, Maryland would have, would have uh, allowed the slave trade. Well, they wouldn't. And what's interesting, it's illegal everywhere. It's it, kidnapping free people is illegal. Even in Mississippi, it's illegal to kidnap a free person. The difference is that Pennsylvania is in the process of ending slavery. Most of the blacks in Pennsylvania by 1810 are free. And so free black children who are on the streets of Pennsylvania are free. But in Maryland and Delaware, slavery is an ongoing institution. And so the presumption of the law changes. Once you get into a slave state, the presumption is that if you're African American, you are a slave. And so if someone is taking a black child through Maryland, nobody's going to intervene and say, why are you carting this black child off? If the black child is chained, no one's going to say, why are you carting this black child off? They'll assume the child was a slave. Whereas, if you're doing it in Pennsylvania, you would be stopped by all kinds of people saying, why are you kidnapping this who, child? Who, who's behind these gangs? People who are professional criminals. The most interesting one is a woman named Patty Cannon. And Patty Cannon has a gang of kidnappers, including some mixed race people, that is people who are uh, both of African and European descent, who help entice children on the theory that the children will be more comfortable with somebody who appears to be African American. Um, so that's one piece of it. The more interesting piece in some ways, although I shouldn't say the more interesting piece because they're both interesting, and that tells us something about human trafficking, uh, which has been going on for a very long time, and also suggests that trafficking in children, which is an international problem today, is nothing new. And maybe it's easier to traffic children because they are less able to assert their rights, they're less able to escape, they're less able to fight back. So that's one piece of it. The other piece of the panel was about the interstate and the intrastate renting of slaves. And this is really fascinating uh, because it turns out that significant numbers of slaves at some time in their life are rented out. The most common time when you're rented out would be when your master dies. The worst day of a slave's life is the death of the master. Because when the master dies, it means the master's estate is going to be dispersed among the heirs. And that means slave families are going to be broken up, slave communities are going to be broken up, slaves are going to be separated from the people they've always known, from the people that they have always lived with. Uh, probably the most famous example is Thomas Jefferson. 